Let's talk about follow-up systems for buyers and sellers that actually work. Ah, I love that. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, you've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 182. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, I want to start off out, uh, start off the podcast today by wishing you a very happy autumnal equinox. I, that makes me smile, Matt Emerson, because I love the word autumnal and equinox. Together, I, it's the best. And the whole you always make me laugh with this. <laughs> I'm just telling you, the whole thing is great. I, just, I, I don't know what happens in the fall. It's my favorite season. And when it, it's here, I just get happier. You know, I really, I love it too, because it's the beginning of th this last quarter where the the weather hopefully starts to change. You can see some colors, you know, even more so here. And we're moving towards all the happy holidays. I know, I know. And I'm right. really starting looking forward with, to it. Uh, starting with this month. Yeah, yeah and I think that October. hopefully this year things are going to be, you know, there's still a lot of COVID going on out there. But I think, you know, uh, if you're around all your vaccinated family and friends, you're going to have a much better time than you have in Absolutely. the past. So I'm excited about that. So that's yeah. good. Another thing I want uh, to chat about real quickly before we get started. Have you been following that horrific fire that is threatening Sequoia and Kings Canyon? National oh, Park? I was going to ask you about this because I saw a brief thing about Sequoia trees and they were putting stuff around the bottom of the trees. Oh. And I meant to ask you about it. What's going well, on? Of course, you know, I actually have trying been trying not to pay attention to it because it is heartbreaking and yes. devastating to think just the thought of all those trees being burned up because this fire is a really huge, very intense fire. Um, but no, so far they've been able to save what a valiant effort to save these trees by wrapping the bottom of these trees. What I've been hearing about this, because fire is actually really good for sequoia trees because the, all of the pine cones and everything are so far up fire, the heat of them allows the, the cones to expand and to actually, oh, wow. To, to do the, uh, to, to regrow the forest. However, when the, the fire cannot be too intense because otherwise the ground is so inflamed that everything just burns up when it hits the ground. Yeah. So this is not the typical fire that is a good thing for the sequoia trees. Uh, so uh, anyway, I thought that was fascinating too. It's like I, I, in the back of my mind, I was trying to just go down that path. Like, I know that fire is good for those trees. Let's let this happen. It's going to be okay. And then I heard that. Naturally like, fires that occur, not the intense fires that we're having now. With the, exactly, with issues, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, like a lightning fire that is not as, you know, yeah. as huge and not, well, not only that, but also the whole idea that, you know, the, if things aren't so drought stricken either. So anyway, wow. I, I, I mean, I thought about you too, because I just know how much you, you love those trees as well. I do. Like, oh, and Brian. please, we, we need to protect them. So thank you. Whoever is putting, who's wrapping those things. I saw like massive, like, yeah, like foil, it looked like foil almost like, uh, uh that and I saw some houses that people wrap their houses in it yeah. and it survived. So in, yes. in, interesting. I know. And, well, you're, they're going to have to come up with other things like the that. The ingenuity you know? of everybody. I love it. Everywhere so. here in the west, western part of the United States that's being ravaged by fires, you know what I mean? They're going to have to come up with some new techniques that are going to be. You better move you know, to fire. Florida. I'm telling you, you have a place. Move here. No, I don't. I don't not, I, I'm not afraid of the fires. It's just you're not. You're not thing. worried? You're just going to wait until it all burns down and then you'll have to move? Why would I have to move? Then there'll be more house, more, more land, more everything. What are you talking about? Okay. Come on, Jana Bryan. Look at the bright side of everything. I don't know. I don't see it. Um, <laughs> That's all, all right. right. Florida's going to be underwater within 10, 20 years anyway, so it doesn't make any difference either. So there you go. All right. On to the topic of the day. Jan O'Brien, lead follow-up. God, we've never talked about Yeah, that. you know, so we're, we're kind of going down the path of uh, Jan O'Brien walking her talk. And since I'm having to exactly do that, I can't sit here and talk to people about what they should do if I'm not willing to do it myself. And and that's what I'm doing, right? So we talked last week about open houses and they work and they really do. And it's about your attitude. But then when you get people at your open house, I want to talk today about a different approach to what to do to stay in touch with somebody that you meet and how to stand out a little bit and how to be pleasantly persistent. So I really want to talk about real estate lead follow-up systems that work. Okay. So, uh, and the very first thing that I want to say, I think is this just call them. 
Okay. And I really mean this because I got caught up in the first open house that I had. And I was like trying to think I had to do this big, huge, I'm not ready to follow up because I haven't established, you know, my CRM that I'm going to use. And I was like doing, and honest to goodness, it was all nothing but procrastination and excuses. So I just want to say the secret ingredient, the, the thing you came to this video for, about what works with lead follow-up. And it's simply this, you just need to communicate with them. And I'm just, forget all the bells and whistles. It's call, text, then you can send an email. You can, you can really take it to the next level with video text and a video email, but you don't even have to do that. It's just actually follow up. And I wanna give you an example right off the bat of how I was able to pick up a, a lead from my broker. Um, and here it was, okay? so. Guy Brian goes into an open house, some company, you know, some other company holding an open house. And this was just last weekend. A lot of people come to the open house. It's over in Dunedin, Florida. Lovely, fun spot. My favorite place. It's my new favorite place after Sedona. I don't even know. It could be Sedona's number two now. Wow. So, uh, yeah. I mean, Sedona's going to be my favorite West Coast like getaway place, then I would have to throw Sequoia in there as well. And then uh, and now I've got my little place that I would really like to be retired to. So anyway, Brian goes to open house, has a conversation with the agent. This is what Brian tells me because he became my client um, and says, yeah, you know, I told the agent I didn't have an, I didn't have an agent. Um, you know, I even was ready to make an offer right then and there on the property. And she kind of blew him off according to him. So he left, he gave her a little time to, to see if she was going to follow up and she didn't, she didn't follow up. So you know what he did? He goes, this is him telling me the story when I met him. So I just went to Google and found myself an agent and, uh, which is a whole nother reason and a whole nother thing. And I'm sure we've already done, I know we've done podcasts on this. We certainly have it in our training, how important it is to be on Google, my business. Yeah. And my broker, uh, uh, Patty Harris, Patricia Harris in Celtic Realty, she dominates on Google. She's been doing it for years and that is how he found her. And so he found her and he found, and it was later on a Sunday, he gave this girl all this time to follow up and then he didn't find someone. He's ready to go buy a house. He's super qualified. He reaches out to her, leaves a voicemail. And then she says, Hey, you follow up with this guy, Jan. And I meet him. He's awesome. He's a veteran. He's got, he's going to use his VA, but he's super qualified. And and I just love this story because now the a couple days later now, it's about day three or four. I, I met with him, you know, this a few days ago. Um, he tells me, oh, that agent finally got back to me. Wow. <laughs> so if you, if you hear me, don't anticipate that people don't actually, if they give you their information, they actually are okay with you giving them a call. And that is... The me- that is the thing I learned from my first case of doing this because I was just getting used to the contracts and the stuff here when I first did my first open house and I was like overthinking it. And honest to goodness, if I had just made some calls quicker, you know, I think I would have done better. So that's what I've been doing since. And I'm going to walk through kind of my process for any kind of, but we'll stick with open houses. But if you meet anybody and they want to be able to get on a drip with you and see what's looking, even if they're not ready now, but they'll be ready in the future. I just want to go through what are those things that we need to do. Okay. So I love this term pleasantly persistent. Shout out to my friend, Steve Kitnick. He used this word when we used to train years ago in Vegas on during all the short sale crazy times. And I just loved it. And I use it all the time. You got to be pleasantly persistent. That means not being aggressive and rude, not being that what I think is in our heads that people don't want you to call them because you're that pushy salesperson. So pleasantly persistent says, Matt, I'm here until you tell me you don't want me to call you anymore. I, I'm here. I want to show my value. I want to get you to know, like, and trust me. And I'm going to show you the ways that I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to be, you tell me. You tell me how much you want me to talk to you or whatever or where you're at. I'm here for you when you're ready. But it's being pleasantly persistent. It means trying more than once to call someone or twice. Try it more than two times. The average agent will go one and a half times and then they'll stop. So you got to go, you got to push through and try different ways. So what else could we do besides that is use your damn CRM. (laughs) And you got to use your damn CRM. So it's going to remind you when to make the next call. Because, you know, at first I was like putting on scraps of paper. I I can't even believe I was falling into the traps everybody falls into. 
Now, for the CRM to work for you, you actually have to turn it on every day. Wow. That <laughs> or is you a... have to open it up and it's got to be the first thing that you go to is your tool because your trusted advisor slash assistant saying, Jan, here's five calls you need to make today because there's that person you met a month ago you haven't talked in two weeks or you tried. That's what it needs to do. So you put everybody in the CRM. You put them in your prospects, you know, your uh, contacts and your MLS because people just really want to look at houses. They want to listen to your boring emails or hear your boring emails. But they, but you do, you do need to do some things to stay in touch with people, and that's what I want to talk about. So CRM's the key, especially as you start building things, and then you're going to automate some of these deals. But you're going to say, have the reminder say, make this call, and then make the call call. Even if you just left a message, it's another sign of being pleasantly persistent. Send a text. Hey, you know? Um, so now open house leads. I met them already, right? If I met somebody at a networking event, that's, I want to switch gears for a second and say, if you're doing online leads, I'm playing with some Google ads and some things right now. And an online leads a little bit different. An online lead, you haven't met them yet. Okay, yep. so the goal in online lead generation, Facebook ads or wherever else that you're getting leads, and if you don't know them, is you still, the goal is to make a connection. If somebody gave you a phone number, okay, and an email, you've got to use both of those to do everything you can in the first 30 days to make a connection with them. So this is where I do think you need a solid CRM follow-up. I call it the initial connection plan. So in your CRM, you need the first time I get a lead because of this ad, I'm going to try to call and text them and send them this email. Day two, I'm going to do this. Day four, I'm going to do this. That And some of it can be automated some through your CRM. The calls can't be. So over 30 days, I think you try four to six times minimum to get the person to call you back via a text or a call, right? So that's your 30-day plan. Now, once a lead that you haven't met yet actually makes a connection with you, you've got to take them off that 30-day plan because mm. that would be embarrassing. So Matt finally decides to call me or call me back or take my call. I got to make a mental note, go, even if I'm sitting here in front of my CRM, then I would go in and I would immediately take him off that campaign. So he doesn't keep getting messages from me saying, Hey Matt, I'm trying to get a hold of you. Let's talk. Okay. You'll, you'll look like a fool. All right. So online leads have a game plan. Then obviously face to face, back to that open house, wherever else, if you got a referral, like the case that I had, um, I, you know, you got to focus on delivering what they want. So this is the qualification process. What's their time frame? Are they a now client? Are they a future client? Are they a next year client? And then based on that, you'll determine what kind of follow-up plan you're going to put them on. Right. Um, so for buyers, obviously people, you got to use the save search, you know, you got to set them up in the MLS. Um, you know, I was playing between have people use my website versus the MLS and I'm using it all. So with my client, recent client here, I shared my mobile home search with him and, and showed him how when he's out and about, because people are out and about how to use it and people like that and it's different. So the home search app is important. I went ahead and met him and showed him what's going on in the market. Use the map feature to kind of do the overlays to say, here's the cities, Here's, um, you know, various neighborhoods. And then I actually built a boundary to create a search for him based on his criteria. And now he's doing, and then I showed him, I had to tell him what I needed him to do so I can work with him and, and learn what he likes. I looked at 20 properties online and he goes, nope, nope, nope. I like that. I like that. I, you start to get an idea what your client likes, right? It's a process. I have a then, question, Jenna, Brian, I have a question for you regarding yeah. the safe searches. You, know, you talked about the boundaries. You talked about what the buyers, uh, uh, what their needs, you know, what they wanted. Do you expand that a little bit? Do you ever go a little bit out of that? Because we all know that the buyers don't actually hardly ever end up buying what they say they were oh, yeah. going to buy. So what do you do in that situation? Do you do, do their exact parameters in the, at first and then start? Yeah, kind of widening it's it? a great Great, great question. This is why it's so important, I think, to meet face to face with someone or do a online Zoom meeting and demonstrate like you would if you had them in your office. And so right. exactly I'll go back and do it with several people I'm working with. It's setting the initial expectation, especially if they're coming from another place. So one of the clients is here in Florida, but he's in another part of Florida and he, it's a different market, even though it's a similar market. It's a different type of interesting anomalies in the different areas. And then I have a client coming in from Denver, a couple coming in from Denver. So um, the bottom line is it's a process. So I had clients who gone through the thing to say, 
what can I buy for under 300,000? Okay. And we just go and I show them with these parameters. There's, there's like five properties. Okay. So then the, pro the, so then I say, well, let's, let's change this. What if, what if we did this? And based on whatever their wants and needs are, I can right in front of them, go and show them how it goes from your parameters are finding five properties. If we just change price, if we change something else, square footage, location, um, this is what we do for it. So what, what do you want to do? Because if you want, if you don't have to buy right now and you want to hold on for that specific house in a certain area and there's only two of them on the market, okay, we know we're in for a long haul. I'll keep you on the search or, do, or you know, what's their time frame? So you have to show them because you can't tell them right. to your point. You show them by using the map feature by right in front of their eyes, changing the criteria and seeing that that's the option. And then taking them through this process of inside of the portals that every MLS has, the client can look and say, love it. They can do a thumbs down and then you can start getting a picture because you as the agent can go into your portal and go, now I see what the person's needing. And that's another reason to get make a phone call and say, okay, great. I see this. Want to go look at these properties now, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Well, so. you know, this would be that'd be another uh, good way to interject, like a Zoom or a Google Meet, into yeah. your your consultation because you could do it live, kind of go through things as well. I so. just had a second consultation live or a third one with my clients that are coming in from Colorado awesome. um, because we were just not finding we needed to expand there. It's real important to them for a, a school zone, like a lot of families. They want a certain school zone. They want a certain. Uh, quality school that they have in their mind a criteria. And unfortunately, uh, Florida doesn't have the best ranked schools. <laughs> okay, I'm learning. Uh, some of them are better than others, like every state. Sure. Um, Nevada was like this too, you know, not having that. There was areas where there were the best schools. I think every state probably of has course, the same issue. Yeah. So, but they're, they're looking at great schools, you know, and they're looking at ratings and it's important because their son is a junior and they really need him, you know, to feel comfortable at making this big move. Yeah. So I get that and we're looking. And so now we've, you know, expanded the search and now there's more opportunities, but it, it all worked because I could show them the layers and I could show them the things that are happening right now. A couple other things when you're, when, you know, it's so important and we're talking about basics here, but. I like getting back to the basics. You know, if you're in this market, it's on you to really be the person who's communicating. Don't assume that the clients, the customers, the buyers, the sellers understand what's going on. They, they may not, you know, just because somebody bought a house before that they're looking to you for guidance. That's the big thing I'm picking up, Matt, of how much people really do want to know what's the sure. process. What's the next step. If I'm going cash, you know, what, you know, what's happening with the market, you know, proof of funds, if it's a loan, how critical it is to get them really pre-approved and not just talk to a lender. Um, how do you position? So, you know, people are still really distraught and upset over losing so many offers. Cause I mean, in, in, um, here in Florida, 40% of the homes last month, cash buyers yeah. in Nevada, 47.1% in August sales were cash buyers, Matt. That's wild. Now, you and I talked about that, and you were like, well, f the other 50% of them were still people that were getting a loan. Good point, but it just seems like most people are running into a situation where they have to write many offers until they find one they'll take them because, you know, not every offer gets cash, but, you know, just the way. You know me, is. glass half full. That's right. So, and then if you're working with sellers, you know, and this is the time to jump in and get that market analysis, um, find out if they have to buy a home first and that all this is qualification process of what their wants and needs are is going to help you determine what your follow-up is and what your next action plan is. And why this is important is because how you separate yourself is that you're knowledgeable, you're asking the right questions, and then you deliver something valuable to them. That's like, here's some information that you might find useful about you know, the process of buying a home here in Florida. Um, here's what, you know, and the, there's some things that I want to talk about here next that are going to be ways that you could knock that out and have it ready to go like a series of videos and so forth. Okay. Um, and that's what I want to talk about right now. How do you stand out from the crowd um, to, you know, the, more than what everybody else has, has done. And we, I just talked about this, you know, it's, you've got to be, you got to make that first connection. A call is always better then a text, and then Zoom meeting to establish. That's what I really go for. Yeah. Uh, a Zoom meeting to establish that rapport and and jump in. And that way you can demonstrate and you can show things and you can talk about it. And, I just and think that is just the it. greatest technique, you know, because it's not as 
uh, scary for you. You know, the the buyer or the seller, they won't feel as committed necessarily. You know, because they're not sitting there right with you. It's not as it's it takes a lot of the pressure off the the conversation. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Exactly. Um, I love the idea of an introduction video uh, about you, why work with you. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can do it in the moment when you meet someone, you know, like after post, after uh, two things here, post open house, you could do a quick video that says, Hey, Linda, it was great meeting you at the open house. I just wanted to follow up with you on this answer to this question or whatever happened in your conversation or wanted to let you know that I'm going to go ahead and uh, set you up on that search that we talked about. Um, you know, you're just doing that. That's a great thing to do when you have a lead you haven't met with. One of the things in your follow-up would be day one, your call text, but then you, day two, you could go, hey, Matt, it's Jan. Um, just trying to follow up with you. You were requested information on 123 Elm Street. I just want to introduce myself. I'm Jan O'Brien. I'm here to help. Okay. And I love that. The other thing around an introduction video is, uh, and this is on my top of my list here amongst, you know, three or four other videos that are on top of my list, um, is to record this welcome, you know, come to the website and an introduction video of if somebody came across my website, plus, plus I can also send people to my website where they would see this introduction video where I take a minute or two to say, who am I? What's, what uh, is my value proposition? Why would you choose to work with me? Okay. And that's, I think, is super important because you can, if you can record that video, it can stand there a couple places, by the way, this video can be over on your Zillow profile, your realtor.com profile, yeah, all really. allow an introduction video. So it can talk about your services for styling and buying just real quick, a little backstory, maybe something personal, and just to try to get somebody to go, wow, I think I could like working with that person. Okay. So that's important. All right. What else we got? Oh Whoa. my gosh, you have to be a local market expert. And I just have to, I've been preaching this and it's so exciting to tell you that it works. It works. Okay. So I really know the Nevada market, the, the Las Vegas, Clark County market. Um, I've gotten to know it even better over the last few years because of jumping back into real estate. I think I knew it like most realtors did and just did it barely, you know, like I knew enough of it, but when you study the market, you stand out from the crowd. So fast forward, I'm over here now in Florida. I stay up to speed with what's happening in Nevada and Las Vegas area. And now I have become a student of the market here. And the only way I made this happen is these things I'm going to talk about right now. Number one, going into my matrix, my MLS matrix and setting up searches that I look at every day. So I want to learn everything about Dunedin, small, you know, 36,000 people. There's never more currently than about 30 listings, 30 to 35 listings on the market. And guess what? There's lots of people that want to buy them. So very first thing, it's funny. I was talking to my broker. She's like, Hey, six new listings came on the market. That's big news because yeah. we, we have only, we generally have like one a month. Okay. And, uh, or one a day, rather one a month, that would be horrible. One a month, one or one or two a day seem to come on the market and then they're scooped up if they're in good condition. So I look at that every day. If I'm working with a client that's in a certain area, um, I set the search up just like them, but I also want to know what's going on in a neighborhood. So that's the first thing that I did. This is how you start to say, I go preview the properties. I know it. Why? Because then when I'm talking to these next people, it's like at an open house or whatever, I can talk about what's happening in the market. I can say there's 30 something homes as of today. And this is the average sales price. And here's the trends of what's going on only because I studied it. All right. In Florida, they have amazing stats in the Florida realtors. <clears throat> I look at those every month. Uh, my local association has daily stats I can look at. I, it's overwhelming how many stats you can look at. If you're using Showing Time, Showing Time has stats. Uh, and then I love, of course, keeping current matters. That's for national housing trends. I look at that every month. I listen to David Childers does this great report about what's happening nationally. That helps you then see, is that trend similar to your, in your area? Generally it is, but then everything's hyper-local. Then you can dig down and go, this is what's happening nationally. It's even more, you know, it's stronger here. That trend is stronger here. We have less homes on the market and continuing high prices, you know, so, and then you may have other sources available, but I just, I, I just have to tell you, if you're going to hear me say anything today, as it impacts your follow-up is you got to know the market. You've got to be the local expert on what's happening in your area. Period. End of story. Oops. There we go. 
All right. So yes, previewing homes, call in talking to listing agents, man. I got to I got to just stop for a second on this. This is a lost art right here. I really believe in collaborative deal making. Another another one from another great little uh, term from my friend Steve Kitnick in, in Nevada. Collaborative deal making. So it's not it doesn't have to be adversarial. You know, you the listing agent if you're the buyer's agent is not the enemy. And people, I am having so much fun calling agents and saying, "Hey, just want to. This is Janet Celtic Realty. I just want to uh, find out a little bit more about the property. I've got a great buyer. Want to be able to set up an appointment." And people love to chat because nobody really actually calls. Everything's done on text and show time, yeah. showing time, and 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 it's like I've had these kind of responses, Matt. Wow, thanks for calling me. Sure. Now, why is this important? This is important because people actually want to work with people they know, like, and trust buyers and sellers and so do the other agents they want to if they if they have a listing that's getting so many offers and all things are sort of equal and they have a little influence on the seller they're going to really go we want to work with this agent who's got their sh stuff together okay and actually communicates and because you can get a deal a, a listing agent can get a deal on and have it fall apart yeah. because it looked good on paper but we have an agent on the other side that's not doing anything you know what i'm talking about agents if you're hearing me don't go back old school and like before we had text, okay? Before we had all these cell phones, have a conversation with someone. You'll be amazed at what it can do. Uh, I'll give you another example. I actually do the feedback on when I use showing time and it, it, it asks for feedback. I give the feedback and say, this is what my client felt. Um, it's overpriced. I've had two agents reach out to me saying, thanks for doing the feedback. Uh, you know, we're negotiable. And now they start telling me about property and what I might be able to do because I'm just communicating with them. All right. This is all part of how to get deals together, how to be knowledgeable of what's happening. And um, just don't underestimate how powerful it is to call. You know what, though, Jan, can I add on, can I add on to that yeah. for a second? What you just yeah. said is so important because you communicated with them. But if you're using that tool, make sure that when someone does that, you reach back out to them. Right. It's a two way street communication. Think about that. I mean, yeah, my totally. goodness gracious. This is the reason why we have it. So, Crazy. you know, you always have to call and go, hey, are we in multiple offers? What's the yeah. status? But I use it to build rapport. I have exactly. so much fun. I want to I want to see if I can connect with the person. I want to have some fun having a good conversation. I'm just having a blast doing this. I'm telling you, it's not hard. It's frustrating. It's just not hard. It's frustrating to write offer after offer after offer. But I know that, you know, this is what it is right now. OK, this is what it takes. And it takes always doing that. even in a, a more balanced market. I would still be doing these things to communicate with the other the other agent. I'm doing it right now with the deal that I finally got together. Yay. Got a deal together. We, we got our first deal in in, in, uh, in Florida, Matt Emerson. And know. the other agents are delightful and the uh, the assistant. And, and it's like we're all working together. We all have a common goal for this for their sellers and for my buyer. And it's exciting. Right. And we're going to have great communication and we're going to talk it through and we're going to make things happen and deal with anything that gets in the way. So there you go. Um, this piece that I was alluding to on how if you had the time to record uh, two or three videos for buyers and two or three videos for sellers, I think this is smart, 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 smart. And I am going to be doing this. Uh, because I'm starting to generate leads and I want to build it into my follow-up and it, and it could be on my YouTube channel, which it will be also, but it's basically how to compete and win for buyers in this market. So it would go through the five things you need to know and you could get your lender in on. In fact, I might have my lender come in and help me with this, Ron. And we can talk about what it takes to get to be the strongest buyer if you're using financing, right? Things like this, the buyer process, what to expect next. So if you had two or three videos, because this is, people are very anxious in a transaction, as you know, they are, lack of communication causes even more challenges or how long it takes to do things and how things can get fouled up. So when you're able to um, continue to educate your, your customer and your client through the process, then you're really giving them that five-star experience that like, wow, you go above and beyond, which then of course leads to getting reviews, getting referrals to other people. It's all part of who you are. And it starts with the way you follow up with leads, but you can even have some, remember, we like to talk, if you listen to us on the podcast, we talk about before, during, and after. That is the way I sort it out in my head. With buyers and sellers, you have a an operations and process and procedures and campaigns for what you do before, which is you get a lead 
and it's all the way up to you're going to go start showing them houses and you write a contract. That's before. And then during it's we're in contract or we took a listing all the way until it successfully closes. And then there's after the aftercare, after the sale, staying in touch with them, building, um, continuing to build referrals and, and repeat business from them. That's how you look at everything. So right now I'm talking about before, but also during because during can be Here's what we're going to do next. You know, before is going to be, here's the, here's how we have, I want you to hear me. I already talked to you about it. Now I'm sending you a video saying with my lender, here's the things we have to do. Here's the things you, you don't go do so that we can get you through this process cleanly. Like don't go out and buy a car. Okay. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't go do this just because we're telling you the loan's approved. Um, and then keep them educated through the process. This is how I think you can stand out. And the same thing during all right, now we've got this. Oh, here's what's happening next. Uh, we're going to do the wire transfer. D let me tell you about wire fraud, right? Here's the way, you, here's what to expect. People are going to be, you can say this to them also. You, a good agent, you're doing this already. You're communicating with them. But listen, here's what happens. People here, they're overwhelmed. They, they heard you 10% of what you told them. Yep. So what if you did that? Then you followed it up with the, the email that, that was your next email in the sequence that says, congratulations, we're in escrow. Here's what's going to happen next. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you stand your, you stay uh, apart from everybody else. Okay? You know, if you're doing an email sequence like that and you have that huge long list in the very first uh, email that goes out of all the things that are going to happen during the transaction, every subsequent email, the list gets shorter and shorter and shorter. That would just be a relief to anyone viewing that email that, oh my God, there's only three more things. Boy, that's a list. great idea, Matt. I, do, I love that idea. That's a great idea to say, here's everything we're going to be doing. And then the follow-up email is that's check. That's check. Yep. That's check. We're down to these things. That's awesome. Cause I you would feel like, like oh my God, we're making progress in this transaction. All right. I love it. Okay. I think, I mean, I don't think that was it. Wasn't it? No, I had same idea, you know, so it's, uh, it's the same two things, right? I just kind of hit that. And if you're watching the video, it was like in the seller it, for sellers, you're going to talk about, what's happening um, in the market. It, we're still in a seller's market, but things are changing. You know, the market's shifting slightly, being aware, helping people understand what it takes to get the best offer and how to be, uh, I believe in the three Ps of preparation, pricing, and promotion. These are all things that you could do with your seller as well. Uh, and then the, the final piece on this um, to me is this nurture campaign of once you have let's go back to lead gen. Cause we jumped ahead into like, now that you gave you some more ideas for once you have a deal in escrow to what you can be doing to uh, continue to have great customer experience. But when you first meet someone and they're not ready to buy right now, okay. Cause if they're ready to buy, you're in the process of finding them homes and showing them homes, right? That's, that's the good stuff. But what about those people that you met at an open house or a networking event that, that say, yeah, we, we're interested in buying in that city, but maybe not till next year. But we're cool with like getting some information from you. Okay, awesome. Well, it's super important to have some type of a nurture campaign. So to me, the very first and most important thing is people like to look at houses. We're trying to get them off of Zillow and those other sites, Redfin and whatnot, and on to your portal to look for houses. Okay, so whether that's your website, your mobile search app, I think all of the above, and you're putting them on a drip campaign so e uh, new listings come to them. This is why Zillow and the others do so well, in my opinion. Yeah. They are they are persistent. I don't even think they're pleasantly persistent. They are persistent at going, Matt, here's another property we think you're going to like. Here's another property we think you're going to like. And people get used to the click on it, go back to Zillow. They learn how to use Zillow, and they like Zillow. So you got to do the same thing. You have to be Zillow. OK, so you've got to get them on a home search and then the the automation that comes from the MLS will do that for them. And then you can if they're way down there, they like to be in charge of their search that you can show them through your videos that you can create to say, here's how you use my portal. By the way, I've set up the search, but you can create your own search, too. Here's how you do it. Those are other great explainer videos that you can do. Right. And then um, the other thing is uh, so you're going to do th things for buyers and you're going to do things for sellers as far as the process in your nurture and your follow-up. And um, you want to also be able to kind of put them at least on a, a monthly marketing email as well. A monthly marketing update is what I really believe in it. Um, so when you do find a property that's perfect for uh, your client, that when you're back in the moment of people that are ready now, um, I think it's really important. Put yourself on the, the notifications so you can see what your clients are getting. I know this can get overwhelming if you have a lot of um, buyers just talking about buyers, 
Um, but I think it's important for you to be able to look and it gives you a reason to follow up if they're not ready to set appointments with you yet, but they're looking and favoriting listings. It's an opportunity for you to call and go, okay, are we ready to go look now? Did you want to go look at that property and that property and that property? Um, the other thing that you could do is if you're in a small area like I am and there's only so many listings, you could go preview a property yeah. that they liked, do a quick video and send it to them saying, Hey, um, I just, I, I wanted to go out and look at this property. Here it is. I definitely think you're going to like it based on what you're telling me. Would you like to, would you like to set up a time to come see it? That's another way to stand out. And then the other nurturing things you're going to do is, is demonstrate your knowledge of the market by doing things like weekly stats. If you wanted to go, here's how many homes have come on the market and here's the average sales price. And then the monthly big market update. That's what I think is important. I'm working on it right now for August in September for August numbers. Mostly you don't get the numbers for the previous month till about the middle of the month. So by the third week of any given month, you could be doing a video on the previous month's activity and give people, uh, you know, your knowledge, share your knowledge about here's what's happening in our market. Uh, here's the new trends. Like some things are happening. Like if you if you pay attention, um, I, I get the news. The Florida realtors are great at sending these daily updates that are tied in nationally and what's happening in Florida. But the latest news is what happened with the feds, right? I mean, uh, the uh, Jerome Powell came out again and says, hey, we're going to kind of back off now and not buy as many bonds. So now we, the last few months, everything I've been reading and getting from everybody that's an economist is like, oh, the interest rates are going to probably stay down all the way through 22 2022 and maybe in 2023 not now now what it's saying is we're going to slow down a little bit which will impact the housing market and it's now projected that as early as november we may start seeing some interest rates uh, creep up where all all year i've been reporting through all these sources that oh yeah solid interest rates are going to stay in the three low threes they're going to inch up a little bit but not till 2022 now we're like hmm maybe not so you have to know these things. How do you know yeah. it? You, you dial in to what is going on in our, you know, you're, you become an industry expert. You're in the real estate industry. Get the news. Digest that. Uh, be able to talk to your clients about that. It's all part of how your lead follow-up is going to happen because you're knowledgeable. You're personable. You really care. And the people are immediately going to, you know, you're going to be able to build some rapport right away. And it's this no like trust factor is built in for you that you uh, that people are like, wow, I really want to work with you. Now it makes it easier, even if they're not ready now. And, and the last thing I want to say here is don't take it as somebody is not interested in working with you if they don't respond right away. I just think people are busy. This is why you must be pleasantly persistent. So you'll find that people will be like, Jan, thanks for staying in touch with me through these last few months. I've been, I, I read your stuff. I'm, I'm on your website. We're finally ready. It's just been very hectic around here. And I've been meaning to get in touch with you. I don't know how many times I've heard that from people on my team, from me in That's the right. past. So don't take it as I tried twice. They're not responding. It's not really good. No, you stay pleasantly persistent. You keep sending value. And then somebody will eventually say, I appreciate what you're doing, but you don't need to do it anymore. You know, I, I didn't really want to tell you, but I had another realtor or thank you. I'm ready. Okay. Or, or just simply stuff happens in your life for crying out loud. Think about yeah. your own life. So I mean, don't I'm take it personally. Like thing, this right? person is not returning my calls. It's like, yeah. you know what? They got a life. Yeah. Like you do. And, uh, but just be persistent until they unsubscribe. I look at it. They're still a prospect. There's still yeah. somebody that wants to get your stuff until they get around to saying, stop sending me emails. Okay, right. fine. Next. Right. Exactly. So hey, anyway, Brian, that, you know, I, I love what you were talking about today about how you feel, how you're having fun with it right now. And that really comes from wisdom. First of all, you've been in the business for a long time. Your confidence is through the roof because you know, you know what you need to do. Right. So I think anybody that's newer listening to this podcast right now needs to know that you can get there and you will get there. It's all it's like this. You ha you face this all your entire life from the time you go into kindergarten. Right. You that if you only knew now what you what you're going to know, then you know what I mean? You would be farther along in the game. But you know what? Just free yourself up and make that phone call. And to that point, we, I don't know if we talked about this. I think we talked about in the very beginning when we started today that, you know, one of the first things that we always teach in our even our fundamental classes or just our our basic classes classes base it is ask it's all about communication so make sure you're asking your clients how you want to communicate with them right that's yes. number one 
That doesn't mean don't make that first call. You have calls out on their list. Make that call. But when you start, when you get them into your hopper, communicate the way they want to be communicated with. And that way they'll communicate back with you. Right? Exactly. You got to know. That's a great point. Don't make an assumption that they want you to text them or, or email them or whatever. All right, I'm finding stuff. that out myself because it's like I'll send a text and there's not a text. And so I... I need to reaffirm with a couple people, like, what's your preferred method of, of communicating? And then, then as soon as you know it, then you do it, then you have better communication. So it's all about communicating, right? So good stuff. I'm telling you, we're just going to keep on talking about this stuff works. It does work. Real estate works. It's a mindset. Majority of it is a mindset. What you put in and what you believe is what you're going to get out of it. And the rest of it comes from just doing. I mean, I'm in the mindset of, yes, I am. I have some wisdom, wise wizard on the mechanics of real estate. You do. Um, and I, you know, and I know how to talk to people and I've been doing this a long time, but it's a little scary to, to, to go through and uh, here's my first transaction. And thank God I have supporting people where I can go. I'm just going to ask a couple of questions. This is what I'm doing with people. It's like, look, I have real estate experience. I'm new here. So help train me, like ask for help. People are like great about helping. If you yeah. just be a little vulnerable and transparent, they'll be like, uh, if you're new, I used to do this all the time. I was like, help a new agent out. If you're a seasoned veteran and the new agent's willing to go, look, you know what? I'm newer at this. I really appreciate working with a veteran like you. Appreciate any guidance you could give me. I'm not going to take anything personal. That would be the approach I would take if I was a new agent. It's what I'm doing now. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, like, hey, I'm, hap I'm happy to learn and I'm excited to work with another professional. Teach me a wise one, okay? That, you can get a lot out of that. And then people do actually like helping. You know, I really do think the majority of people enjoy helping someone else, and especially if you come from that place. So just go do it. Don't be afraid. This is the thing. I was in a fear mode. I will admit it of, well, I better go learn everything. I found myself falling into the same things I'm always coaching. I'm not really ready to talk to uh, somebody because I don't know how to write the contract. So I made myself get uncomfortable. I went and took some classes, and then yeah. I just went and started doing some prospecting. Then I realized, okay, I know what I, 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 I'll, I'm not going to fall on my face. I've got people to help me. But if you wait and wait and wait and wait, you'll never do it. So. Really good stuff, Jenna Brian. I love All it. right, that's it. Before we leave today, though, we want to talk about a couple offers that we have. Oh, right yeah, now. please we do. We have an incredible new course. It's a YouTube for real estate course. We are offering it at an incredibly uh, ridiculous introductory price of $197 now through the end of September. So you have about another week or so to grab that uh, course for $197. October 1st, the price goes up to $397. But the course is all inclusive. It's A to Z. If you go to over to our website and click on um, the YouTube, uh, more information about to YouTube. I think it's uh, five or six, maybe seven modules. And it is just filled with YouTube A to Z from how to start your course from nothing to how you actually put your uh, YouTube uh, channel together, how you actually get your video equipment going, how you, you kind of format your entire videos from the beginning to the middle to the end, and then the whole editing process and everything you need to know. It is a, it is incredible course that is packed with information. So don't miss that great introductory price uh, between now and the end of the month. And then of course, whoops, excuse me, push the wrong button there. Just course, next week. Yeah, I was gonna say, you only have another week on that. Um, now, of course, we want you to join our uh, Dream Builders uh, Facebook group. If you haven't done that already, we have great stuff coming there. Not only do you always get a 10% discount in all of our courses, uh, but we also, starting on the uh, 19th of October, we'll be having a monthly live workshop uh, on YouTube as well. Plus just other great stuff that's going to be on there, including all of our videos posted in one convenient place, as well as our podcast video as well. So to become a Dream Builder, go over to our website, click the big green button at the top of the page called Join Dream Builders. And the final perk you get with that, when you sign up to become a Dream Builder, if you already don't have all of our free courses, you automatically get loaded all of our free courses. And then when you get to the for Dream Builders page, you'll have access to all of our free downloads, which I think right now are is in like the 12 or 13 free downloads. Um, so great stuff there as well. Anything else? Absolutely. Jenna? Just come, just go do it. Choose something and go do it. Yep. So everybody make it a great week. I'm out and about and uh, we'll be bringing hopefully some more valuable lessons learned or some insights from the active real estate world next week. I love it. So get out there. Happy autumnal equinox and be forever wandering, but not lost.